We live in a world where a lot of horrible and downright bizarre things can happen, but the case that I'm going to tell you today is more than that, and it brings a fictional character into the real world, and this ultimately becomes into a massive disaster that costs a lot. But before we begin, if true crime stories intrigues your interest, then I'd highly suggest you subscribe to my YouTube channel, that's all I do, and I upload once a week. And also, if you don't mind hitting that notification bell, so YouTube will let you know when I upload, and you can be one of the first people at my videos. But with all that being said, let's begin. This story starts off with three girls, Anissa Weir, Morgan Gaia, and Peyton Natuna. And while there's not much known about Anissa Weir, apart from the fact that she was born on November 10th, 2001, and her parents Bill and Christina Weir would raise her to be a smart academic student. She would grow up in a city called Waukesha, Wisconsin, where a lot of her childhood was, and everything would go normal for the young woman growing up, and she would meet a girl by the name of Morgan Gaia, and Morgan, who was born on May 16th, 2002, so she was a year younger than Anissa and her parents were named Matt and Angie Gaia. And growing up for Morgan was pretty difficult, unfortunately. She would, from a young age, experience different type of hallucinations, such as seeing ghosts and colours on the wall melting off. And in for some instances, there would be a tall figure poking off from the corner of her room, which ultimately all these hallucinations together would take a massive toll on her. And she would also grow up in the same city as Anissa. And also she was a small student as well, just like Anissa, who she would thrive in school until the fourth grade. And unfortunately, that's that's where things began to change for Morgan. She would begin to start acting more unusual around her friends, and her friends would notice that Morgan's been acting unusual, and unfortunately, due to that, they would become more distant. And along with this weird transformation, Morgan would become obsessed with unalivened, and also she would develop this uncanny feeling of having no empathy for anyone, or anything. And there was a time when Morgan's mother and Morgan were watching a movie, and Morgan's mother began to get more worried, and well, that's because the main character in the movie, who was a young child, would lose her mother due to the fact that she had to sacrifice herself. And for many people, such as Morgan's mother, this would be in a very emotional scene. But not for Morgan though, she would begin to laugh hysterically at the child's mother who had just passed away. And Morgan's mother could remember that being very disturbing for her. And soon Morgan would delve into the land of creepypasta due to the main fact that she kept seeing this tall figure in her hallucinations. And well, when she kept on seeing it more frequently and frequently, this made a search on the internet. And that's how she found this whole creepypasta thing. And if you don't know what creepypastas are, it's basically people on the internet making up these fictional characters who are very scary and have disturbing backgrounds to them. And creepypastas weren't really popular during the early internet days, but as the internet kept on rising, so did the creepypastas, and they became very popular. And also with the rise of social media, it would just enhance the popularity of creepypastas. And soon people began to see these creepypastas in the real world, which ultimately made other people believe it, and in turn combining it to become even popular. And in the land of creepypastas, there's loads of them, but there was one that Morgan was truly intrigued in. And it's probably the most popular one, due to the fact that it's got many movies made about it, and many games. And you guessed it, that character was called Slenderman. And the main reason that Morgan was obsessed with Slenderman, it's just basically because the fact of when Morgan would see these hallucinations of this long tall figure, it would match the exact description of Slenderman. And a quick description about Slenderman, it's just a long tall figure with a white face and no facial features. And it was originally made on this web form called Something Awful Online Forms. And originally the first person that made Slenderman posted that picture onto a Photoshop paranormal competition. But somehow that image and that character stuck with everybody. And just like all the other creepypastas, everybody began to believe it, that this thing was real. And so things would lead to another and Morgan would head out into the woods by herself many times. And in her words, she would essentially talk to Slenderman. And while things would get to a point where Morgan would bring along Anissa, and she would basically tell Anissa everything about her hallucinations and Slenderman. And by the way, these two met in four Fourth grade and they would quickly have a liking to each other and saw a lot of resemblance with each other and they would quickly become friends and also Anissa was a fan of creepypastas as well and when Morgan would ask her would you want to come into the woods to talk to Slenderman Anissa wouldn't say no and both of them would head into the woods and talk to Slenderman but also in that same year they would meet another girl named Peyton and Peyton was a lonely girl at first she really had no friends at all until she had the same class as Morgan and Anissa 
and so when she walked into the class Morgan and Anissa looked at each other and knew that Peyton could be a friend and so they would ask Peyton to come over because they also saw that Peyton seemed a bit lost and also a bit lonely and pretty quickly the three would click and they would become very close friends and they would stick together in school and when school finished they would go outside and hang out outside of school and things would be the same for many years and their bond would become much closer. The parents of Morgan would begin to get very worried about what their kid was doing because sometimes Morgan's parents would become very nosy and they just wanted to hear what Morgan was talking about and so when Morgan closed the door into her bedroom the parents would stand in front of the door and put their ears on the door to hear what she was on about and all they would hear is Morgan talking to her friends about Slenderman and how they could please Slenderman and this wouldn't be a one-time thing unfortunately she would keep constantly talking about this Slenderman and of course Morgan's parents would constantly overhear it and so one day Morgan's parents would just have enough and you gotta remember again Morgan's parents have no idea what a creepy pastor is or what Slenderman is they just know that ever since she started talking about Slenderman her mood, her attitude and just her overall self just changed and so one day Morgan's parents had enough and they would walk into Morgan's room without announcing themselves and they would just tell Morgan straight up that this is far enough and of course Morgan with her head buried into a computer would turn around and would look at her parents with a confused look and her parents would tell her that what you're doing and what you're talking about this strange thing can you please stop because this isn't good for you and ever since you started talking about this you've been acting up and you've been misbehaving and we don't like it and we can see that this isn't really good for you and your mental health but instead of sympathizing with her parents Morgan would just lash out and would just start screaming at her parents to get out and that you don't know anything about Slenderman and even though Morgan's parents did not want to go they knew that they should probably leave anyway because this wasn't leading anywhere so they would leave eventually and after this whole ordeal Morgan would text Anissa and would tell her everything that just happened and they would agree to meet up 20 minutes later and so that 20 minutes went by and Morgan and Anissa would meet up and well they would both walk into the forest where they would always walk and they would go sit down on a bench and they would begin to talk to each other about how they can please Slenderman and then for the next hour they would go through different ideas but none of them really made sense or really made Anissa and Morgan think that this is it this is the thing that could please him and they would keep going and going until the night was coming in and both of them still did not have an idea and that they knew that they needed to figure something out so they would both promise each other that over the next couple of days we're going to make a plan and once they said goodbye both girls would separate and go back to their respective homes but the next couple of days they wouldn't be able to get a plan together and things would stay normal for the next couple of months and during this time Morgan would tell her parents that I'm sorry how I've been acting up and also she would just really calm down on the whole creepypasta slash emo lifestyle and Anissa would never have an issue with her parents because she would never tell her parents anything at least about this creepypasta lifestyle and so moving on to May of 2014 Morgan's birthday was on the horizon and traditionally she was allowed to bring three friends to her house for a sleepover and of course she would ask Anissa first and of course Anissa would say yes because she would always go to Morgan's sleepovers and of course she would text Peyton and also would ask her hey do you want to come over to my sleepover and Peyton jokingly would say I will because this is a very sacred tradition and Morgan would say great I'll see you soon so the next day would go by and the day is now May 30th and both Anissa and Peyton would arrive at Morgan's house and of course they'll be let in by Morgan and all three of them would head to Morgan's room and the three would just hang out and do what girls do over a sleepover and since they were having so much fun the night would quickly arrive and the girls decided that in the morning we'll leave bright and early so we can go on a walk so the three would stay up just a tad bit more but ultimately they would go to bed quite early the next morning would come around and the three would break up bright and early and they would get ready straight away once they got ready they would head downstairs get some food and then they would put their shoes on and get ready for their walk and this walk was through the forest that Anissa and Morgan always walked through so there was really no chance of them getting lost at all and everything with this walk would go normal and the girls would chat with each other laugh with each other and would just talk about school things and it was around about the 15 minute mark where Anissa would just randomly stop walking and in a reaction of course her two friends would as well and well she would tell Peyton to walk ahead because she needed to tell Morgan something which was very secret and that she had forgotten to tell Morgan before they went on this walk and so Peyton a bit bummed out because she wanted to know what this secret was but she respected her friend and kept on walking and Peyton began to walk slowly but it wasn't long before Anissa and Morgan would shout at Peyton to wait up because they were done with their conversation and so Peyton would stand still and watch Morgan and Anissa come running towards her and when they got into arm's distance Morgan would ask Peyton hey do you want to play hide and seek Peyton who was a bit reluctant because she really didn't feel like playing hide and seek it's 
especially in the fact that it was early in the morning and she was a bit groggy but she would still agree anyway and Morgan would volunteer to be the seeker but she would specify that you can't go too far because it would be impossible for me to find you and so all three girls would agree that there's a limit on how far you can go and if you go too far you're automatically it and after that all of them would agree and Morgan would begin to count down and both Anissa and Peyton would spread out and hide in their respective areas and Peyton who found this bush that was big enough for her to jump in which she ended up doing and as she leaped in and began to wait she could feel a heart racing and the random sudden urge to go to the toilet and as she began to wait and wait suddenly she can hear footsteps walking around the bush that she was in and she didn't know if this was Morgan or Anissa but either way she stood still and her heart's going faster and faster. So as Peyton sitting there listening to her footsteps walking around this bush suddenly she hears another set of footsteps walking around this bush as well and now Peyton is just terrified because she doesn't want to get caught but also she knew that if this was Morgan the other person must be Anissa as well so she must have won but either way she wanted to stay inside and see how long she can be hidden for so as she's listening to these two footsteps walking around her suddenly it stops and not even a second later she would have felt a hand through the bush and that hand would latch onto Peyton and that exact same hand would launch her out of the bush and for Peyton this was a blur because it happened so fast and when she finally refocused her eyes she saw that she was pinned to the floor and who pinned her to the floor you might ask it was Anissa and Morgan and they had pinned her to the floor and Peyton looked at Morgan and to a horror Morgan had a knife because this wasn't some traditional walk for Morgan's birthday this was Morgan's and Anissa's plan to sacrifice sacrifice Peyton's life to Slenderman because they couldn't think of any idea to please Slenderman but one conversation would lead to another and Morgan and Anissa would decide that Peyton's our sacrifice and surely this would please Slenderman and the reason why they chose Peyton wasn't just random and the main reason was over the years Morgan and Anissa were becoming much closer but for Peyton she was becoming more distant as because she wasn't really into the emo slash creepypasta lifestyle that both Morgan and Anissa were indulging in and the two noticed that Peyton Peyton wasn't a fan of this and in turn this slowly made Morgan and Anissa to hate Peyton and when the two were talking to each other for a method to please Slenderman they knew that the ultimate pleasure for Slenderman would be a sacrifice and who better to sacrifice than the person they don't like anymore Peyton and so when Peyton got pinned down she'd be stabbed up to 19 times in the arms the legs the torso with a five inch knife that Morgan had brought along with her during this walk and once Morgan and Anissa were done brutally attacking their longtime friend they waited for a minute to see if that Peyton was dead and once they waited and saw that Peyton wasn't moving anymore they knew that she was finished so casually they would just leave Peyton's body there and they would both walk back home but there's a slight but even though Anissa and Morgan thought that Peyton was dead she was actually somehow alive and she was just unconscious but when she finally woke up Peyton was hit with all that pain that she went through and she would begin to look around and then the situation would hit her if she doesn't get out and find some help she'll die and she would get this fight in resilience to live so she would lie on her stomach so she can kind of limit the bleeding that was leaking out from her belly and she would begin to army crawl all the way until she got to a road which the exact distance isn't known but it was pretty far and as Peyton would army crawl her way onto this road she would begin to scream for help and look left and right to see if there was anyone nearby and to her horror there was no one nearby and Peyton was at her limits she had used all of her energy to crawl out from the forest and so she would just lay flat on her belly and would just wait to die or to someone to help her and thankfully to her surprise a nearby cyclist who was cycling through this road saw Peyton and the cyclist's name was Greg and he would take Peyton to the nearby hospital and of course when Peyton was admitted into the hospital the police would be called and they would ask Peyton who did this and of course Peyton would tell them that it was Anissa and Morgan my two long best friends so the police would quickly head out and search for them too and not long they would find Anissa and Morgan at a furniture store and of course they would arrest them on the spot but strangely enough Anissa and Morgan also had a black bag with them and when the police opened it up they were in horror because in that black bag was the same knife that was used on Peyton and the crazy part is is how lucky Peyton is to be alive because yes she got stabbed but where she got stabbed was millimeters away from being a fatal blow and killing her instantly and this was multiple times because she got stabbed up to 19 times some of them stab wounds were close to her liver 
her heart and once again if these hit her directly it would be instant death. Both girls would be arrested and then trialled. Anissa would be very sympathetic and would just tell the judge that I didn't want to do this. I just did this for Slenderman and nothing more. But on the other hand Morgan would not be sympathetic. She wouldn't really care and in fact she would state that this was a necessary sacrifice. This case was so bad that both girls would be waived out of juvenile court to be trialled as full adults. Anissa pleaded guilty to participating in second degree murder which she was sentenced for 25 years and the first three years were in solitary confinement. Morgan would receive 40 years but she would periodically get the chance to appeal this decision and that was due to the fact that the judge actually thought that Morgan was mentally insane and of course she did have a past of mental health problems and as of today Peyton is a doctor and she would actually thank the girls in a 2017 interview because from this horrific incident Peyton would be inspired and, and would pursue a career in medicine. Morgan is still in prison today and Anissa has been released on September 2021. She has moved away from Waukesha where she was and moved to an unknown location to start a new life and she actually graduated from a college which was undisclosed. So that will be it for today's video of true crime stories pique your interest and I'd highly suggest you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, that's all I do and I upload once a week. And also let me know in the comment section what do you think about this story. And also I just wanted to say a massive shout out to all 400 of you guys. I couldn't do it without you guys and it just means a lot. But with all that being said, thank you for watching and yeah, goodbye.